dating advice for women, use the age of consent through the early 20s to lock down the highest value guy that you can possibly get. So with content that I've done on this channel and other red pill content going over the trajectory of men and women and how that tends to play out, it's in women's best interest to take advantage of their youth. But a lot of times there's other influences like people telling you study hard in high school, study hard in college, focus on yourself, party, work on your career, get the house, get the car, then look for family and kids, then look for the guy, then look to settle down. Certain trajectories and paths that are laid out to people, men and women both, that cause us to do certain things based on keeping in line with what, how, what we're expected to do for the community or society or school or whatever, but kind of goes against biology, kind of goes against some natural ways of living. So what I mean by that, going back to the concept of men and women, is when you have women with the fertility and men with the burden of performance, it's in a woman's best interest to capitalize on that at a younger age because she's gonna get the highest value guy from her late teens to her early 20s, whatever the age of consent is for that state. I'm just using the example of the United States because that's the country I live in. So whatever, whatever your state is for the age of consent, whether it's 16, 17, or 18, it's gonna be that age through about early 20s that's gonna be the prime for you as a woman to capitalize. And you should capitalize because it's different for men. We, we don't start with anything, so we have to work up. We have to become somebody. We have to evolve. We have to turn into somebody. We have to mature. We have to become distinguished and all that, whether it's finances, looks, understanding of the world, intuition, spirituality. We have to evolve into that where women just are. So that's why women need to take advantage of that age of consent through their early 20s because the pathways between the men and the women are going to be different for how that's going to affect them long term. So when you have these influences, like I mentioned, that say college, high school, college, focus on the degree, study hard. If you work harder, you'll do better than the next person. If you study harder, you'll do better than the next person. Focus on your career, then look for the guy, then look for the family, then look for the kids. If a woman's been following that track, she might you know, be a straight-A student in high school, straight-A student in college, goes on to a, to a master's program, focuses on a career, parties, does whatever, sleeps around, tattoos, piercings, whatever the case may be for that particular woman. She could end up being 30 and then go, oh, well, uh, what about kids? What about my long-term future with securing something with a guy? It's just going to be different for her at 30 than it was at, say, 20. So it's not that anything's ever too late. I mean, certain things are, so you're not gonna be 75 and just walk onto an NFL team. You're not gonna be a 75 year old woman having a kid. So certain things are definitely too late, but in the general idea of that, no, it's not ever too late to find somebody or fix something about yourself, improve something about yourself, change your mindset. But it's different for men and women when it comes to the opposite sex because a man at 20 going to 30, in general, he's going to become better and more distinguished and have more to offer, whereas it's kind of the opposite effect for the woman. So even though it's not too late necessarily, she's just not going to be able to land the kind of guy that she was able to get back in her late teens and her early 20s because it's just different in terms of the transaction of that, in terms of what someone provides the other. It's like basic trade. Even if we're t we take this back thousands of years and we're just nomadic people and we come across each other in a field somewhere it's like oh i have these fruits you have those spices i have this knowledge of how to do woodworking and build huts and shelters you have this knowledge of how to garden let's work together so human interaction in general is always going to be a 50 50. it's always transactional it's always what are you doing for them what are they doing for you bottom line so being conscious of those things when it also comes to the dating scene is key because you're not going to get around the biological clock and fertility and being able to have a kid what you provide the competition that's the thing too talking about these opposite trajectories that we have with men and women on a competition standpoint 
a guy coming out of high school at 18 years old, he's at the bottom of the barrel. So all the other guys are older and they already own all this stuff. They own businesses, they own real estate, they have all these finances, they're smarter. They're just more battle tested in life. So a guy at 18 is starting at the bottom of the economy and he's got to work his way up. He's got to go up to yeah. something. So it, it's different though with the woman because if she starts at 18, then she's you know in the prime of her youth and fertility so to speak and then as she's getting older there's just younger girls coming up at that point to replace them so to speak so the competition it's like it's like opposite the guy starting young the competition is just impossible because there's just so many other guys other options whereas the girls start at like the high point and then as they get older there's younger ones to replace them and keep the line going so the competition is still there but it's at different phases of the game so that's why men and women have to look at it differently they're equals but they're different it's like counterparts it's two halves to the same coin sun and moon night and day it's just the duality of how things work so it's important to understand that duality as opposed to just saying, oh, well, there's no differences between being a male and being a female. There are differences. There are real differences in terms of the leverage that that male or female can use for their own life, regardless of whatever they want to do. If they're looking for something serious or something casual, it doesn't really matter. That stage of the game, how old you are, the competition around you, that matters. So it's kind of self-defeating from a woman's perspective, if she's led to believe the whole high school, college, feminism, do whatever, party, get get a degree, get your career, oh, you can make as much as a man does, you can make more than a man does, and then when it comes to the dating life and the love life, the sex life, if she's been focusing on that, it's just going to be a different part of the game if she's trying to wake up or trying to realize things or trying to start over or trying to settle down at like 35 or 40 as opposed to earlier in life because women can do that anytime guys and girls can do that anytime go back to school start a new career change their philosophy on something men and women both can switch at any point and call an audible on whatever play and do something else so for women they can do school whenever they can do their career whenever they can do their side hustle whenever but locking down like the highest value guy that she can possibly get or having a kid having them young so you're going to be a young mom so that there's less birth complications so that you can have the kids and raise them so that when you get to be in an older age yourself you're not wasting energy on someone else's life taking care of them so those are important things from a woman's perspective to take care of it younger and it's hard though too because part of the learning experience for both men and women is something where say if you take a guy and a girl and let's just say age 30 is the age that most adults wake up and become fully mature let's just call it 30 when people say okay I've realized past mistakes and I have a better sense of who I am and what I want to do there's a difference between the man waking up at 30 and the woman waking up at 30 because that's just two different phases of the game for both of them the man can still reach a, he's not even at his peak because he can still increase his career his finances his looks just he can keep going up the ladder so to speak where is her waking up at 30 that's already the wall at that point so it's just two different stages of the game and it's hard though because with your younger say like 16 year old kids it's hard to know what you want out of life and whether someone's trustworthy or whether someone has good intentions for you. So I understand it with women now, how it can be very hard and they're fighting a timeline that men aren't fighting. But in general, it's better for them and for their game and for their strategy to capitalize on their youth. With that age of consent through early 20s, it's going to be better long term if they have sense of that timeline. I'm out here today selling um, my brand my buff brand and then other items I have on consignment been doing this all summer I've vlogged a little bit about it my umbrella it has a three position tilt right here it actually just tilted over while I was making the video but 
yeah, that's part of YouTube too. I just do these spontaneous videos, um, just in and out of what I'm doing throughout the day. And I wanted to touch on this subject because I see it a lot too, just with people talking about it or people think again like, age difference is weird between a guy and a girl, but sometimes those age differences make sense for various reasons. And I've even met girls out here, like I met one girl from Alabama, early 20s, blonde, beautiful. She was saying that how guys will always give her free stuff and like free coffees and just whatever she wants basically. I was telling her just like, it's nice, just make sure that you know, in your early 20s now, understand the early 30s being different than that. And she's like, please, I don't want to hear that. I'm just, I'm just looking out. I'm just, I'm just letting you know what it is. Because if, if you're going to bank on free stuff, being a young girl in her early 20s, oh, guys, give me free stuff. If that's all there is, then there might not be a, um, a secure future lined up from just thinking that that's what it's always going to be. Because it's not always going to be that. With age and attrition and competition of other people, it's just different having the testosterone as a guy and the penis versus the estrogen and the vagina for the girl. It's just it's just different. So if you don't know those differences, then you might not capitalize on what you could have got had you known them going in. So it's a little bit harder on the woman's side because their ending point happens a lot younger than a guy's, so to speak. But if I was a woman or if I was advising a woman, I would definitely say regardless of whether you want to do the casual thing or serious relationship or family or no kids at all, use the age of consent to the early 20s to capitalize on whatever that is. Everything else can wait, the college, the school, the career, but capitalize on that peak youth, that peak fertility, because that's going to be your best time to do whatever you want as a woman in terms of other men.